2 Samuel, chapter 16, David is on the run from Psalm. Uh, there I go again, Absalom. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, so in every word there's a particular hill, it's not named. Behold, Ziba, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread. That's interesting. A hundred bunches of raisins. Bunches of raisins. Bunches, that's the first time that word shows up and it deals with raisins. I've never heard raisins called in bunches. And a hundred of summer fruit. And a bottle of wine. Look at that. Bread and wine. Associated with David, a type of Jesus Christ. Summer fruit. You know, where to bear fruit? Raisins, old grapes. I don't know where to put that in. But, you know, you take grapes and make the fresh wine. But you can't do that with the grapes. And the king said unto Ziba, Ziba, either or, What meanest thou by thee? What is this stuff? This is the same thing that happened with Abigail. David goes and gets some food, and Abigail sends almost the same thing. Raisins, she didn't send the, the fruit. I think she sent uh, calves dressed. He asks me for the king's household to ride on. Again, as like I said, in the Old Testament, the donkeys, asses, are the transportation of kings. That's why Jesus got on the colt of an ass, never broken. He's the king of kings, and above his head, the king of the Jews. When you read this in the Testament about, okay, here's an ass for a king, a Jewish king, and here comes Jesus on, on a donkey, there's your king. And the bread and summer fruit for the young man to eat. It's almost like, duh. <laughs> I mean, is David really out of it? That What is this stuff? It's for you, king. And the wine. That such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. It says a bottle of wine. David's got a whole bunch of people with him. I don't understand that. I mean, how big is that bottle? Well, all of them are. I mean, we're going to see a couple of verses. They're all, in verse 14, we'll see they're weary and refreshed. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? As we Mephibosheth. And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. Now there's no witnesses. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore the kingdom of my father. I don't believe that's true. I believe Ziba has a plan set up, and I'm going to meet David first. He's supposed to bring Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is lame on his feet. If there is any reason why Mephibosheth is not there, it's because of Ziba. Mephibosheth has no conquest, no rebellion against David at all. Then said the king to Ziba, Ziba Behold, thine are all that pertains unto Mephibosheth. He listens to the lie and awards Ziba. David didn't inquire of God or anything. So that which was Mephibosheth is given over to this liar, the servant, in the mouth of the king of Israel, David. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when King David came to Baharim, he's still going east, he's in Benjamin, and he's on his way to the Jordan River. Behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, Saul's family, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. 
kind of weird. Did the news get out already? Or did the Lord send Shema? David's on the run because of his sins. And he cast stones at David. And all the servants of, of, of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. So he's just shouting his mouth off. He is cursing. He is yelling at David. He is angry and he's throwing stones. At all David's men. And thus said Shimei when he cursed. Now here's the curse. It's not blankety blank 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 blank. That's cussing. The curse is come out. Come out. Thou bloody man. Thou man of Belial. Which is the devil. 2 Corinthians 6 15. Go on. David the devil. And yet, in the in the Gospels, there were times that they told us, they said, Jesus is doing the healing of the spirits, the devilish spirits, in the God of Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies. So we have another typology of David and Jesus. They're both accused of being Satan. It's interesting. The Lord has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. Untrue. Untrue. It's a distraction. If there's anything that David's guilty the blood of is Uriah, not Saul. What did David do to kill Saul? Remember when we read that? We said the fact is that God had David many miles, many miles south. Of where Saul died. Where Saul was killed in battle. David was nowhere in the area. So Shimei is wrong. In whose stead thou hast reigned. That's true. But God put him in that office. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. That is true. But David has already been told by Nathan why. It has nothing to do with Saul. It has to do with Uriah. Thy son. And behold, so he does know something. Now either the Lord spoke to Shimei, look how quick the news gets out. And there are no televisions, there is no radio, there is no TV vans, there's no satellite hookup. And as David comes out, here's this man. He's already got all the news. There is nothing new under the sun. When Jesus, with those devil spirits, they came out of those two men and they went into the, the swine. Man, here comes all the quick reporters running into town. You guess what we saw? They, we were there right on the spot. Come see Jesus. Behold, thou art taken in thy mischief very much true. Sin. Because thou art a bloody man. True of Uriah. Not Saul. So he's almost right. Then said Abishai. Here they go. The son of Uriah. This is David's family. Unto the king. Why should this dead dog. Uh, he's not a dog. If he's of Saul, if he is of the family of Saul, he's a Benjaminite. He's not Gentile. He's not a dog. But dogs in the Bible are unclean. And we have a particular expression ourselves in America of a female. And where does that come from? Where do we get the acknowledgement of calling someone a bad name by a dog? It comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. I'm not even going to wonder what modern Bibles do because I don't care about the modern Bibles. But a dead dog. A dead dog's unclean. It's a dead body. That was unclean. Not only a dog unclean, but a dead dog. Curse my Lord the King. Now watch these, these sons of, of uh, Zariah. I mean, they are just vicious. Two times they catch Saul. And they're like, let's kill him. 
I pray thee, let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. Yeah, almost as bad as the Muslims. Let's just take his head right off. What's David's attitude? And the king said, what have I to do with you? He sends you to Uriah. He's had it with these guys. Do you remember the time that Jesus is walking with disciples? And John and James say, because the city rejected Jesus, shall we call fire down like Elijah, Lord? Come on, let's do it. And Jesus turns around and man, he gives them a tongue lashing. This is exactly what David, here's another type of Jesus Christ. He turns around to his men, like the disciples, his men, and gives them a rebuke. Another type of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? These two guys are the sons of Zariah. John and, and, and James were the son of, oh man, now I forgot the father's name. Oh, they were, they were brothers. One father. He'll come to me about 3 o'clock in the morning. So let him curse. What's he doing to me? Let him curse. He's the king. Still. Let him curse. It ain't bothering me. Because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David. David is saying, That man is sent by God to, to, to give me a tongue lashing. You know what David knows right now that the men of Zeruiah don't know and maybe half the people are with him? Nathan told David this was going to happen. I'd rather have this guy cuss and yell at me by cursing and throwing these stones. Rather, I am not going to hell and burning because God has given me the sure mercy. Let the guy cuss. Let the guy curse. Let the guy throw stuff at us. When you go out in a public ministry, you're going to have these things happen to you of Shimei. They're going to yell at you. They're going to try to touch you. They're going to try to throw stuff at you. They're going to slam that door in your face. They're going to yell at you. They're going to throw words at you. And they will cuss at you. Shall we start a fight? Shall we start? Just let them do it. Let them go. Throw a couple Bible verses at them. Throw them a couple things about, about God and Jesus Christ and salvation. Just let them go. Let him go. Curse David, who shall who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? So if God's in it, leave it alone. Man, this is a guy who, who's running from his son. This is a guy who's had this son kill one of his sons. He's just had a baby die. He's just got a chewing out by Nathan by God. Let him do it. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels. Now you see, that is not a physical act of the body to go potty. That part of a male body, of David explained here, the rear end of a male does not have anything to do with producing children. When they say a bowel movement. Bowels is inside you. Medical authorities, how great and wonderful the degrees are, they don't know what word education is. If you take out the E, you got a bowl. It's simple to believe. Seeketh my life. Absalom's going to kill me. How much more now may this Benjamite do to me? You know why he just said Benjaminite? He again just rebuked his soldiers. That's not a dog. That's one of our brethren. And I didn't do nothing to Saul. And there are some of Saul's family that I love dear. Don't you dare call him a dog. Ooh, my boy. I fought with dogs, Philistines. David got called a dog one day by Goliath. Are you come out to me as a dog? I'll come out here with God and put that rock in your head. How, now may this Benjamin do to me. Let him alone. And let him curse. For the Lord has bidden him. Look at that. 
And that's one of the things, like, oh, with street preaching, they'll come up and they'll just let them do it. They don't know any better. And it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction. And that the Lord may requite, that is to repay me good for his cursing. Maybe God will take care of it. Maybe God will honor it. Maybe this guy cussing me out and throwing stuff. Maybe that's just one of the, pen, the penalties, the payments of my sin with Uriah and Bathsheba. Then let him do it. And when the Lord says you're done, it'll be done. And as David and his men went by the way, they're going on the way to the Jordan River. Shimei went along on the hillside over against him. Now you see that hillside? Now when we come back over here in verse 1, notice it says the top of the hill. And the hill is in italics. That's not in the original. And when they put it in the italics, they say, well, you know, there was no word there. So we're going to honestly put a word there. Where did they get the hill from? They got it from verse 13, the hillside. What is mentioned in verse 1 is probably going back to verse 13, that hill. Don't remove the italic words. That is the King James 1611 translator saying we're, we, that word was not there, but we're being honest to tell you it's not there. Modern Bibles don't have that honesty. So there's the, the two references why that hill is in italic. They're at a hillside when Shimei is yelling at them. So when they come to that hill, what's the hill? The hill where Shimei meets them. He brings them all to a complete stop. Over against him and cursed as he went. And threw, that's the first time that word shows up, stones at him and cast dust. Now this guy, he's just being a jerk. You want to know, now, this is an off type of Jesus Christ. David is getting pelleted with stones. If Shimei could, he would stone David. Why? That was the, the capital punishment of a murderer, an adulterer. All right, now let's go to the type of Jesus Christ offhand. In John 8, 59, we're not going to go there, but John 8, 59 and in 1031, 859 and 1031, the Jews had in their heart to stone Jesus. And there was one time, uh, John chapter 8, they picked up stones. Or 10. One, one or the other, they actually were going to pick up stones. And Jesus just moseys himself out of the crowd. But David, let me tell you, for his sins, because Jesus is sinless, for his sins, David, he's getting pelted to with those stones and dust. And the sins that he'd done according to the law, he should have died at that stone. But the mercy of God, David's protected. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. That's kind of weird. They arrive at the spot weary and then refresh themselves. They took a little break. They've been exiled and they've been rejected. They're on the run and they come to a place and maybe there was a grove, maybe there was a well, maybe there was a river somehow. They're just, okay, take five, eat of the trees or the fruit or refresh. Lay down against the tree, you know, just let's stop running for a moment. Gather our throat. And I would assume by now Shimei is gone. I don't think they're going to take a break with Shimei throwing rocks and dust at him. Because, all right, let's take a break now. <laughs> and Absalom on the other side of the coin. And all the people of the men of Israel came to Jerusalem at Athahel. Now he's going to be a type of Judas now. He is going to sell out David. Not for 30 pieces of coin, but he's going to, he's going to betray David. As Judas did. And it came to pass when Hushai, now remember this is David's friend. This is David's spy. He had come to David. David says, no, no don't come with me. He said, I want you to go back to Jerusalem. I want you to pretend to be Absalom's friend. And I want you to use the priest to get me word to know what's going on. And this is a particular military tactic. They're called spies. Hushai the archite, David's friend. 
was come to Absalom, that who shall I say to Absalom? God saved the king. God saved the king. Well, they say queen today. But when they had a male on the throne, it came out of a Bible. And I believe that, I think I've seen that the national anthem of England is God save the king or God save the queen. That comes out of a Bible. Some of our patriot songs of America are bar songs. Do you check the history? Now, I don't remember which one, but don't need to know. But God save the king. Ooh, boy, who shall you're really sticking your tongue in that one, aren't you? But he is the king. Sort of. Roundabout way. Is not the Antichrist going to be the ruler of all the nations? God ain't going to save him. And that's what I said to Hushai. You know when you write and you live right and you live according to the Bible and you do something wrong, Hushai is doing something wrong, they're going to notice you and they're going to rebuke you. I've had that happen many, many times. I've had people look at me, well, what are you doing that? You're not supposed to do that. You're the Christian. You're not supposed to say that. You're a, I had one time I was at work, a long, long time ago, I worked for the newspaper. I was on the loading docks one day. I just said, you know what? This sucks. And everybody in that loading dock stopped and looked at me. I'm like, what? And they look at me like, you said that? I'm like, what did I say? I actually thought I said something. I thought I could. They said, you said it sucks. I'm like thinking, that's it? And to them, here's a Christian that living the right and doing what the Bible tells them to do. And, and the worst thing that could come out of my mouth is the word suck. I wish I use it all the time. Who shot? He lives right. He's doing right. He is best friends with David. He comes in. God saves the king. God saves the king. And Absalom goes, oh... He's got that evil eye looking at who, uh, who, uh, uh, Something ain't right here. Something's not right. Is this thy kindness to thy friend, David? Why went this thou not with thy friend? He has no idea that he did go. <laughs> so, Hushai's got the best plan here. Absalom has no idea that this man did leave and meet with David. But look, look at what Absalom says about Hushai. And you're with David. You stick close to David. And it is odd for you to be here as much as for a Christian to walk in a bar or walk in any place of worldliness or sin and to say, here I am. And the world will look at you like, you don't belong here. And yet the worldly Christians do that today. And Hushai said unto Absalom, now here comes a lie. <laughs> Nay, but whom the Lord, that's Jehovah. <laughs> People can lie in God's name. Many times I've heard that. And this people, okay, we'll take that, Israel. And all the men of Israel, okay, the Jews, we'll take that. Jews, or is that chose? I can never tell those two words apart. Jews or chose. His will be, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And that's the king. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to do right by God and by the Israelites. And I'm going to be your servant, Absalom. And again, whom shall I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? Oh, is that not a good? Shall I not serve in the presence of Jesus Christ? Isn't that right for a Christian? Right? What is Satan called? Is he not called the Antichrist? Is he not an imitation of Jesus Christ? Well, watch that. Watch this talking to the type of Antichrist. Again, whom shall I serve? Whom shall I serve? Shall I not serve in the presence of his son? The imitation of Jesus Christ. Look at that word matching that. He is relating to Absalom as the son of God. And he's the Antichrist. At the end of the seven years, the Bible says, uh, Revelation 19, yeah, 19, 
Jesus has a name that no man knoweth. Nobody knows who Jesus is after seven years of Jacob's trouble. Jesus said, my name, some, and I'm misquoting this in John, he says, my name, something, but him that cometh in his own name, him that you will receive. That's in John. I know that. And there are some, possibility, I don't know, but there's some to say that the Antichrist is going to come in the name of Judas. I don't know. I don't care because I'm not going to be here during the tribulation period. But look at that remark referencing to Absalom, one of the greatest types of it, uh, the, the Antichrist, the son. And that's what the Antichrist is going to play. He's going to play the son of God, but the small g. Satan has a son. That will be the false prophet. Antichrist being, you know, God, Satan himself. I want to watch how I said that. As whom I serve in the, in the Father's presence. Would you reference that verse to the fallen angels? Revelation 12, the angels that were in heaven before God and one third of them were cast out by the dragon, by God, and by Michael the archangel. Look at verse 19. Look at the references to the Antichrist. Satan has been where God is. Job 1, Job 2, Isaiah 14. Verse 19 is not to David. That is to the devil who's going to be incarnate in the flesh. The Antichrist. That is going to fool all the world to think that he is God. And will sit where God is supposed to sit. In the most holy place. And that moment when he sets up that image. Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. Those three Jews are going to say that is wrong. And all the world, when the music plays and you start rapping and dancing, having a good old time. And boogie wooging to the golden image set up. Set up. And all the government officials, the sheriffs, the deputies, and there's a whole lot, list of them. Only a very few Jews are not going to fall down and worship that image. Then said Absalom to Ithahel. Let's turn to the other guy. Now, this was David's counselor. Give counsel among you what we shall do. All right. What are we going to do now? And Ethel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubine, which he has left to keep the house. So David is expecting to come back. You guys keep the house. And all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. David's going to hate you so much what you're going to do to his wife. You will be absolutely hated by David. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. Where do you see this in the Bible? There are two people who have done what Absalom is doing or going to do and they'll make it three of them. Reuben slept with his father's wife, one, one of the handmaids. And then there was a man in the Corinthian church that was sleeping with his father's wife. And Absalom's now going to sleep with his father's wife. So David will hate you. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. What happened to David? Let's look at 11.2. 11 chapter, uh, 11, chapter 11, verse 2. David's reaping. And you know what? David's not paying for it. 11 verse 2. His wives are paying for it. And if you ever think that your sins are not going uh, to hurt anybody else, you are a fool. Your sin will do others harm. And 11 2. And it came to pass in the eventide that David arose from off his bed. And walked upon the roof of the king's house. Well, he's on the housetop. Chapter 12, verse 11. Chapter 12, verse 11. 
This is a prophecy that Nathan told David by the Lord. Verse 11, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. That's Absalom, his son. Satan lived in the house of God in heaven one day. Now, Satan is not the son of God, as the Mormons would say. That's a lie. And I will take... What's that say? It says wives, doesn't it? What are concubines, according with the verse of Arena? They're wives. Before thy eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor. That's your son. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the son. And let's go back over here. He's going to do this right before all everyone. He's going to get up on the housetop. Click, click, click. And he's going to kiss mama. I've seen Satan Claus kiss mama. Coming down the chimney. So scripture was scripture where David went for a walk one night. Solomon during the day with the sun high in the sky. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. And Absalom went into his father's concubines. Chapter 12, verse 11 said, wives. You may give it a name as a concubine, but God said, it's your wives. I, I, forget, I don't know. They have words for men that step outside their wives. That's what they call, whatever they call them. The Bible says it's still your wife. Flesh joining flesh. He told that woman at the well in John chapter 4. He says uh, something about her husband. She goes, I don't have any husband. Goes, oh, yes, you do. You got four husbands. And the one you're with right now is not your husband. People don't realize that the marriage bed is when flesh joins flesh. My father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Can you just imagine that moment? It's like watching cable TV or going to the movie theater. Here's a king up on the housetop having relations with a bunch of women that are not his. That's Hollywood. So inside of all Israel, in chapter 12, verse 11, said he did it right when the sun was out. It wasn't at night like David said. And God told him. All right, so let's look a little bit about Ithahel. And the council of Ithahel, which he counseled, the first time that word shows up, in those days were as if a man inquired at the oracle of God. That is the first time that word shows up. And it's a place of answer prayer, oracle. And this would also go for false. It's somewhere where you go, that you go to pray to God, and Jesus said, a prayer closet. It may be an altar. It may be at your bedside. It may be in your, your chair. It may be wherever you pray. That's your oracle. And God, through the Holy Spirit, says, Ethel, though he's now going to do wrong and go against God and David, his counsel before that was like somebody walked up to God and said, I need an answer. So was all the council of Ithahel, both with David and with Absalom. So this man was sought out. He was a counselor. He had the answers. So what he says may be right, according to the Bible. Says he does right. He says right, but he does wrong. And there are people who may say what is right and do totally wrong. That's in the Bible too. 